Marie, is there anything you'd want to, to add to that in the context mm -hmm. of leading up to Nissan deciding mm -hmm. to locate it into Sunderland mm -hmm. in terms of unions, the cultural side? And I recall mm -hmm. at that time quite a lot of debate in the press about you know, industrial relations, there was, you know, there have been some mm. difficulties in the 70s and so on. Indeed. Was that something that you personally did a lot of work on? Well, I was, I was certainly um, very aware of not so much tensions, but um, a sense that there were problems, I think it was shortly after the uh, Jaguar strike that um, this, was, this all came to the, the fore. Um, and the, the phrase was bandied about quite a lot, the Japanization of British industry. Japan seemed to offer a kind of mecca for British companies that were having problems, <coughs> and particularly problems in, in labor relations. Um, so yes, I mean, I think this, this was an important factor. Um, I think also the, the very different union arrangements that the Japanese companies had uh, what gave rise to quite a lot of remark. I don't, I don't know how many members of Nissan and uh, staff have joined your, your union, Trevor, but it was always discussed that the Japanese approach to unions was so very different um, from, from what we experienced here in Britain. Yeah, um, we, we made a, a single union agreement um, with what was the AWU, I think at the time now is uh, Unite. Uh, and we actively encourage all of our members to join the union. Uh, percentage, however, does vary, but it varies probably between 25 and 30 percent. Um, so generally, there isn't um, a large union presence. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, our agreement, which is uh, sanctioned by obviously the company and the union, means that we carry uh, out all of our uh, negotiations, our terms and conditions improvements, through a body which is we call uh, the company council and that is by uh, uh, five nominated people from the company and ten elected people from the employees who may be or may not be union members mm -hmm. and uh, that's worked well with us for the last 23, uh, 24 years mm -hmm. and we have not had one day of industrial action or unrest in that, in that period. Mm -hmm. okay, uh, Richard Cotter, Geography Department, uh, Northumbria University. I'm quite intrigued in the connection which both of the talks had about science innovation and which way that is sort of extended <coughs> outwards through, um, through commerce because he made, uh, Marie, the, the sort of uh, remarks many times that Lord Armstrong really represented the region and the economic interests of the region mm -hmm. through commerce but not built on manufacturing per se but actually on, on, on innovation and, and design-led, research-led really. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's you know what Newcastle is trying to do now is to sign city uh, in the region really. Um, whereas in, in many ways uh, I think uh, the story, as it's told out in the city and ordinary citizens, still is a, is a history uh, and a story of decline of heavy industry, mm -hmm. not not a story of uh, a long legacy of actually uh, innovation, uh, design and research, which actually uh, led to that you know, global prominence mm. uh, uh, and, and then Nissan and, and some other companies uh, were sort of instrumental in the Gates of Public uh, Academy I I again with, with Gates of College actually making that point that, you know, with Deming and other people that actually design and innovation actually leads to a different way of, um, of, of manufacturing. That's only the way which you can, uh, you know, claim, claim your future. So maybe actually uh, uh, it's a different way in which mm. that connection needs to be uh, uh, told and, and na narrated rather than starting, mm -hmm. you know, ten years ago or something like that with a new ambition. Mm. Wonder whether you want to comment on that? Well, in a sense, you're also looking at very different stages of economic development. Um, Japan, you know, it's often said um, you know, Japan experienced its industrial revolution in such a short space of time with the aid of, of the West, etc. But that is now viewed uh, as a very uh, sim simplistic uh, way, way of d defining the Japanese industrialization experience. Japan had uh, so many well-established traditional industries, handicraft industries, on which it could really build in terms of innovation. So I think we were even then talking about partnership. But certainly at the time the Japanese were 
purchasing battleships from British yards, from Elzig, particularly through the late 1880s, 1890s especially. Japan just didn't have the infrastructure and the knowledge to, um, to move into that sphere. By 1914, Japan was opening its own yards and building its own ships. So it was a, a fairly short-lived period of time. I didn't have time to go into the other areas of um, cooperation. Uh, Parsons Turbines was um, you know, producing for Japan. There was so much technology transfer going on. Um, but certainly there was tremendous appreciation of the best that Victorian technology had to offer.